Hi and welcome back. In our last video we began to create templates for the pages in our site. And so far we've just created one template that has a full width content area right here and no banner slider right up in this area. In this video what we want to go ahead and do is create a second template that's going to have a right hand sidebar over here in this area and this way we will have a couple of different choices as to the layout of the pages when we actually go ahead and create them. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to go ahead and do is go into code view here and we need to go ahead and add that right hand sidebar div. So I'm going to go ahead and after my content div closes right here I'm going to go ahead and hit enter a couple times and I'm going to go ahead and just create a new div and I'm going to give it the ID of right side right side and then I'm going to go ahead and close that div off and some just some placeholder material we need to place right here inside of the right side div just like we place some placeholder material right up here so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this material here and paste it down into here so I'm going to go ahead and copy that and then again we can right click and select paste and we'll paste that on in there. I need to make a few adjustments here. Uh, the title here should not be H1, it should be H3. We need a lower level heading and the same thing for this H2. We're going to go ahead and make that H3 and I'm going to go ahead and type sidebar heading in here same thing down here and I'm also going to get rid of one of those paragraphs and I've got actually a lot of text in these so I'm going to go ahead and just delete a big chunk of this here there we go and I'm going to do the same thing down here. I just don't want too much text in our sidebar. And we'll save that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in design view. That looks about right, like the about right amount of text that I want to have in those sidebars. So first step, again, create the div and then just place some placeholder content inside of it. Now we're ready to go ahead and add the CSS code that's going to go ahead and position this element. Now not only are we going to have to position this element, we're also going to have to work with this element on the page because we want both a smaller primary content area here as well as the new right hand sidebar area. Now the problem is going to come up in that this ID content here, that style has a specific meaning. It's a full width div. So we actually need to modify that div name just a little bit and create a new style for the smaller content area. So I'm going to go ahead and call this just content dash left and that will allow us to leave the content style alone and create a new style just for this left hand section here. If I go into design view you'll see I've lost the formatting for this section because again there's nothing at all inside of it. So now I'm going to go ahead go into my style sheet and scroll down until I find my containers and the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just highlight this content style right here and copy it and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it in again and rename it left content dash left now I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll go back into design view and you'll see the formatting is back on that section but it's still taking up the full width of the page. So let's go ahead and go back into code view here 
and we're going to take care of that simply by putting the width property in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say width in this case is going to be equal to 600 pixels. So not too terribly big. Actually I'm going to make that a little bit smaller to accommodate the padding. Let's go ahead and make it 580 pixels wide. And we'll go ahead and save that. And now when I look at this in design view, you should see that the content is now constrained into a much smaller space. Now let's go ahead and create the style for that new div, that right side div. So I'm just going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of space here. And again, the ID is right side. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a width of 240 pixels. And let's go ahead and close that off and save it. And we'll come back in here to design view. And you'll now see that sidebar has been constrained into a smaller area. So the next thing we need to do is we need to position both of these elements. So let's go ahead and let me come back in here to the content left. And I want this to float all the way over to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and use my float property and the value is going to be left. I want this right hand sidebar to do exactly the same thing. I want it to float up to the left and it's naturally going to go into that space that's provided when the content area moves over. Let's go ahead and save this and again I'll take a look at this and you'll see the uh, content area right here. And you'll see that sidebar is sort of just moved up in there still in the center. I want it to go ahead and float over into this area right here and then we're going to go ahead and take care of this banner bottom div here. So let's go ahead and add that float left property to the right side as well. Float left, and we come into design view, and now that sidebar is over in this area. But again, you're going to see that this other content has moved itself up into that space. So that isn't what we want. You look over here, we've got all this over here, total mess. If we look at this in live view, it's going to look a little bit different. And in most browsers, this will position itself right. But just to make sure for all the browsers, including Internet Explorer, we need to go ahead and put a property on our bottom banner here. And that's going to be the clear property. And you'll remember from the uh, previous tutorial, when you clear a div, basically what you're saying is, move it below anything that I've floated above it. So in this case we floated both the left hand content div and the right side div and we're saying the bottom banner should clear those both. And when I go into design view now you'll see that is moved down there. And we still have quite an open area right over here. We're going to go ahead and format that next. So let's go ahead now go back into code view and the first thing I'm going to do with this right side div is I'm going to apply some padding onto it or some margin excuse me so I'm going to go ahead and say margin should be 20 pixels around the content there and I'll go ahead and go into design view and there we go now I can see what I've got going on there let's go ahead and format our h3s you'll remember that the headings for the sidebar area are going to be these H3 items. So let's go back into our style sheet and scroll up until you find the heading styles right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make the headings a little bit larger. I'm going to make them 20 pixels. And then I'm going to go ahead and specify both the top and the bottom margins here. So I'm going to go ahead and say margin, and I want there to be 30 pixels on the top, 0 on the right, 15 on the bottom, and 0 on the left. You remember when you have four properties, or four values, after the margin property or the padding property, this is top, right, bottom, and left. 
So we'll go ahead and save that and come back in here to design view and now you can see the way my sidebar is going to appear in this area right over here. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see how this looks in a browser just to make sure. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in Chrome and there we go we can see our sidebar I may have moved that top down just a little bit too much but I can go in there and easily change that so this is working in Chrome let's go ahead and try it out in Firefox oops page is much larger than the video window there let me go ahead and change that around there and you can see my sidebar is working fine in Firefox Let's try Internet Explorer and see how that's working. And there we go, just like that. So all three of those browsers, and Safari would be exactly the same thing, all three of those browsers are now going to display this sidebar. If for some reason or another your uh, sidebar does not neatly flow up into this area here, in Internet Explorer you may need to and this is only for older versions of Internet Explorer you may need to change the doc type and again here I'm in my doc type right now or on my source code from my main.html there's my doc type statement this is the HTML5 doc type and Internet Explorer occasionally has trouble with that you can change that to HTML4 and any problems should go away. If I go ahead and go into my framework here and go into the HTML folder, you're going to see that there's a file here called doc types. If I was to open that up, you've got the different doc types you can use here. There's the HTML5 doc type. The if HTML5 does not work, I would recommend that you use this HTML4 transitional doc type and you could just simply copy that and paste it into or right over this existing doc type right there. But again, with the way we have this laid out right now and since I'm running the latest version of Internet Explorer, everything should appear okay in this area. Let me allow block content and that'll show that right there. So now we have a nice two column sidebar layout that we can use. But it's still in this main HTML, sort of my construction document here. So we need to actually make this into a template. So let's go ahead now and go to File and Save as Template. And I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, you know, I made a mistake here. You're going to see it says Save as Template, but I don't see my basic template. And that's because I'm looking at the site Timothy Framework here. And that's because in Dreamweaver, I left myself looking in that folder right there. I need to go ahead and change back into my video project folder. And then when I go ahead and go to File, Save as Template, you'll see I'm in the Conte video project. There's the basic template, that full width content area there. I'm going to go ahead and save this as right side. It's going to be the right side template. And again, you can name it whatever you want. Yes, I do want to update my links. And I now have a new template. Last thing we need to do before this template is actually ready to be used is to go ahead and add editable regions, both for the main content area here and our sidebar. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this text here. I'm then going to go to Insert, just like we did before. Choose Template Objects and Editable Region. I'm going to go ahead and name this Content. And I now have created an editable region around the content there. I'll highlight my sidebars right here. And then go to Insert, Template Objects, Editable Region and I'm going to go ahead and name this one right side. So now I have both a right side editable region and a content editable region. So when I actually go ahead and apply this to a page, again all of this area right up here, and you'll actually see this if I 
go to uh, live view here a little easier. All this material up here, the banners, the menus, all that is going to be controlled by the template. So if I needed to make a change to a menu item or to a banner graphic or something about a banner graphic, I could simply change that in the template and that change would cascade to all the pages that are formatted with that template. But I can still modify the information inside of the editable regions to customize the content for each uh, page that's formatted with that. So we now have a second template here. Uh, the first template I went ahead and used on the index page. The second template will go ahead and apply to another page, the about page right here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to right click right up here and do new file. I'm going to name it about.html. I'm going to go ahead and open this on up. And you'll see the page is blank. And then I'm going to go to Modify, Templates, Apply Template to Page, choose that right side template. And you'll see when I go into Live View here, that template has now been applied to my new About page. Let me save that. And you can see here, if I'm actually going to the design view, you'll see whenever I hover over any of the common areas, I get the cursor that's in the shape of a circle with a slash through it, indicating that I cannot edit those areas here. But these editable regions here, I can actually click inside of, and I can edit any content that I wanted inside of those. So we have our second template, our right-hand sidebar template. We're going to go ahead and create a third template. Um, and actually, before we do that, let's check one more time. Always good to check multiple times here. I'm going to look at this page. I'm going to look at it in Chrome. And everything looks good. Look at it in Firefox. And everything looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at it in Internet Explorer. And again, everything looks good. And you actually will notice the difference between IE and other browsers. IE is actually making this area a little bit wider than, let's say, Chrome or Firefox actually were doing. But that's just the buggy nature of Internet Explorer. So we're through creating that template. And again, we're going to go ahead in our next template and create uh, our next video and create a third template that's going to have that fading sliding banner up here at the top. So we'll see you in the next video.